everyone, this is Vanessa. Welcome to Collide Center Ministry Online. This is Wednesday Night Live. We hope that you have had a great week and we are excited that you are joining us. First, we would like to let you know that we are giving away a free DoorDash order at the end of broadcast. In order to enter, you need to like and comment before the video ends. We will announce the winner in the comment section at the end of broadcast, so stay tuned and good luck. All the information you need is emailed out in our newsletter each week. So check it out and let us know if you need help getting in. Thank you all for joining us. We're glad you are here. Remember to like and comment for a chance to win the prize and share this video to help others see it. All right, you guys, it's time to build a team. We are in a new series called Jesus and Culture, and it is time to build a team with our knowledge and our passion about culture and history and pop culture. So you're going to build a team that's going to save the world. You're going to pick one person from every slide, including yourself. So you plus four people are going to save the world together. One person from every slide, you get to pick them to join your team. Here we go. Tell us in the comment section, who are you going to pick? So pick one member of the Justice League to join your team to save the world. Tell us your answer in the comment section. You guys can agree or disagree with each other. We'll give you one more second to decide who from the Justice League are you going to pick to join your team to save the world. Okay, next slide. Pick one serial mascot to join your team to save the world. Who are you gonna pick? Lots of options. Some of them are good, some of them are better, but who do you want on your team to help save the world? Tell us in the comment section and check out each other's answers. I bet there's even some, if we're missing one, if you can think of one that's not on here, go for it. Give you one more moment, to pick your person, type it in the comment section, Man, now I'm really hungry. I need some cereal. All right, next, you're going to pick one animal to join your team to save the world. You've got a turtle, a cat, a chicken, and a pig, but you can only pick one of them to join your team to save the world. Who are you going to pick and why? Tell us in the comment section. We'll give you just a minute to figure out your decision. All right, last but not least, pick one player from among us to join your team to save the world. You have to pick one of these. You got green, blue, red, yellow, white, brown, orange, pink, purple. I don't know if I'm missing anybody, but pick one. I don't know why you're gonna pick this one, but I bet you, I bet you have a feeling, you got a gut feeling. You're gonna pick one to save the world. I think I would pick lime green and I would call him Fruit Loop. And Fruit Loop would help me save the world. So you tell us in the comment section, who would you pick to join your team to save the world? All right, so now we're at the end. You have four people plus yourself. Go ahead and type your entire roster in the comment section. So type all, all yourself and then four people that you just picked to join your team. And we'll compare and see if we like each other's teams or if you really like yours. Maybe you wish you could go back and change, but I bet your team is great and we're proud of you. Good job for picking your teams. Let's jump into the next game. All right, this game is called Emoji Movies. And you guys may have seen a couple of these before, so good luck. We're going to give you some emojis on the screen. And you need to be the first person to type the answer in in the comment section. So let's see how you do. All right, here's our very first one. Okay, what movie is this? Type in the comments or just yell it out loud. I bet you guys know this one. The answer is, of course, Spider-Man. All right, so pretty easy. I think you guys get the idea how this game works. Let's try again. Okay, what movie is this? It's a classic, it's a great movie. Believe in yourself, type the answer with confidence. The answer is, type it, type it, you know it. It's an old movie. The answer is, of course, The Wizard of Oz. 
Good movie, classic. All right, let's keep going. Okay, what is this? This movie's been made several times. I think anywhere you guys get, like in, in it's got several different names. So if you're close, we'll give you credit for it. Type your answer in the comment section. I got a ticket, a hat, some candy, some chocolate. Yes, this movie is, of course, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Maybe it depends on which movie you're watching. All right, we're gonna kind of switch over to specifically animated movies. So this is gonna help you out a little bit. All of these movies are animated, so that'll help you put the clues together. Let's see, some of these are old, some of these are newer, and we're gonna give you, you know, just a few seconds to write the answer. So type it as quickly as you can. Here we go. Okay, we've got some animals, some fire. There's, this is an animated movie. It also became a live action movie. I used to love this movie as a kid. The answer is, type it in the comment section. The Jungle Book, classic, love this movie, so good. All right, next. What movie is this? <laughs> love these emojis, this is great. I had no idea there was an emoji with a hat, but it's a very specific hat. It's a big clue. You got a rocket ship, some pizza, aliens. Hmm. One of my all-time favorite movies, one of my all-time favorite animated movies, the answer is Toy Story. Toy Story, probably Toy Story 1 is my guess. Okay, a couple more. I love this movie, it makes me cry. The music is beautiful. If you know it, type the answer. A very short name. I bet, I bet you guys know this one. I bet you know it. This is Coco. Such a good movie. All right, last one. Okay, this is our last movie. Type your answer in the comment section as soon as you have it. It's an animated movie, obviously. What movie do you think this is? Give you a couple seconds, type in the answer. We have, of course, Wreck-It Ralph. Great movie. Thank you guys for playing. Hope you enjoyed that and we'll, uh, we'll jump into what's next.
Hey everybody and welcome back. We are in week two of our series called Jesus and Culture. We want to start off with a review from last week. We kicked off the series March 2021. We're so excited to continue the conversation and here's the foundational truth that we talked about last week. The truth is that you and I each have culture. You and I are each made in the image of God. So when we talk about faith, we talk about who God designed us to be, and then just the natural ways that our, our life, our family, our community has developed. We find that in the uniqueness of you and me, of our families, of our community, uh, of our nation, of other nations, and really the whole world, we find sprinkled out through everything, and every person is the image of God. So again, that, that, that follows through the whole line. You and I are created in the image of God. We have our unique culture, history, experiences, thoughts, philosophies, personalities, and everything. Our family is made up of people who are made in the image of God and has its own culture as well. And your community, your neighborhood, your, your school even, uh, you know, this greater uh, like Baltimore, DC, Annapolis area, the state of Maryland, the United States of America, all the way through to all the different places we can trace our our history back to, right? We can look back at our family history and say that maybe some of the culture from, from, from where my family used to be is now here. Some of us have lived in different parts of the world. Some of us have lived in different parts of the country and you all have known and seen, right? We all have our unique culture. We all have our unique things about us, the way we eat, the way we talk, the way we dance, the way we sing, all these different things. So in this conversation of Jesus and culture, we wanna come starting with this truth that God created all of us and that inside of each of us we find just a little thumbprint of who God is. So last week we talked about celebration, right? God is a God who loves to celebrate. Our God, our Heavenly Father, loves parties. And we look through a couple stories and we can look through more and I encourage you to, like more opportunities where, where God invites everybody to celebrate. He commands them to have a festival. You know, he tells a story and at the end of the story, the the son returns home and the father has this big party, right? The story of the prodigal son. And at the end of everything, at the end when Jesus returns and we are in heaven forever, it's this picture of a wedding celebration. Basically like the, the wedding reception that will blow your mind and you've never seen anything like it because God loves to celebrate, God loves to party. So you and I, in the image of God, in our family, in our cultures, our communities, we have different types of celebration. We still see the thumbprint of God, the influence, the power of Jesus that has crossed every border and every boundary, right? So it's not just people that live here know how to celebrate and people who knew, live over here don't. People who celebrate like this have it right. People who celebrate like this have it wrong. We wanna stop that mentality we want to open ourselves to the truth that we're all made in the image of God and that every person, every family, every culture has a valuable, amazing thumbprint of God on them. So we should learn and open ourselves up to explore and celebrate each other, celebrate ourselves. So we talked about this a little bit and I want to kind of pause and kind of give just a, I think something we all know, but maybe we can, we can um, evaluate ourselves and, and how we have these conversations. I know that we love to talk about different unique experiences. Some of you have had the opportunity to travel to a different place in the country or a different place in the world. And sometimes when we talk about other cultures and we, we want to celebrate, sometimes we do say it in a way that is like, wow, I can't believe how crazy people that live here are. They do X, Y, and Z. And I just wanna make sure we guys, when we're having these conversations, we are being mindful that we are genuinely inviting one another to share the way that God has put his thumbprint in my heart to want to celebrate, right? So then in my culture, I want to celebrate, it may include something like this. And then in another culture, it may include something like that. 
We're not comparing the two, and for us, it's always easy to look at something different and to look at it as weird or crazy or even gross. Now, it's okay that we're different. It's okay that what, what another culture might do is not the same thing that I would do, and I think we want to look at that and honor these two differences, not from like, I'm looking down on somebody else and kind of making fun of what they do. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Like the difference between uh, I want to learn and experience somebody else's tradition or culture, and I just kind of want to talk about how weird I think it is. Those are two completely different things. So I think we're all doing a great job of this so far, but I want to remind ourselves and remind myself that when we have these conversations, when I get to, especially if somebody invites me into their home, I get to go to their wedding, I get to go to their celebration and their party, it's a, an amazing heartfelt experience to see something really deep inside of somebody else. Like God put a passion for celebration in all of us. It may look different, feel different, smell different, taste different, you know, sound different, everything, but that doesn't mean that what God has put in me is better than somebody else so that I get to look at them and kind of make fun of what they're doing. So I wanted to cover that because we're going to continue to talk about how God has influenced everything in culture, right? And, and how everything comes back to who God is one way or another. Today we're talking about storytelling and the story we tell with our lives and the stories that we share and celebrate because God is a storyteller. God loves telling stories. Jesus came from heaven to earth, and that's the greatest story ever told, that God who lives really in a place we can't imagine. And uh, We always tell this story of like God is up in the clouds, and maybe if you fly high enough or build a ladder tall enough, you'll get up there somewhere. But the reality is we can't even mentally comprehend where God is. But Jesus came from that place, from heaven to earth, to be with us. I mean, the most amazing story ever, that God came to be with us, to walk among us, to be together with us because he loves us so much. And we look through what we call the Gospels, which is the story of Jesus coming from heaven to earth, Jesus laying down his life and giving everything for you and for me because he loves you so much. And then we get into the Easter story, really the whole point of the story, that Jesus came to die on the cross for our sins so that we could have eternal life and, and what's so really important about that is not just that Jesus conquered death and sin, but he, he rose again, that there's new life, that there's new hope, there's everlasting eternal life in heaven for us because of what Jesus did. So that's the story, right? And there's so many little stories inside of that big story. There's all these moments, you know, Jesus feeding 5,000 people, Jesus walking on water, Jesus healing a blind person, Jesus loving a woman that nobody could love, and all of these other stories. God loves telling stories, and the Bible is full of them, right? The Bible is a collection of stories. So God could have done a lot of different things, but he chose to tell stories. He chose to use the written Bible and the spoken word to tell stories. So God loves telling stories. There's stories all over the Bible. Jesus taught and, and gave truth through telling stories called parables. There's just so much about who, who God is and what Jesus did for us. It's all about storytelling. So, all of humankind and the culture of human nature is telling stories, right? That's something about who God is, that the thumbprint, the signature of God on creation is that we all tell stories. It's just, it's one of those things you can look at and say, I, I don't, I can't look up in the sky and see God, but when I look at his creation, there's some things I know about God. Number one, from last week, God loves to celebrate. Number two, from this week, God loves to tell stories, and we see that through his creation, through each other, and all the ways that we tell stories. So culturally, here's where we get into maybe the personal, God created all of us in his image. How do you tell stories? What kind of stories do you tell? We'd love to tell you guys, you know, tell us in the comment section. Like, do you tell jokes? Do you tell stories with your friends? Do you tell stories to your family? Um, like, what does it look like for you to tell a story? Do you act it out? Do you type it in a text message? Do you call somebody up and tell them on the phone? Do you Snapchat them? Like, how do you tell stories? If you had a really good story to tell, how would you share it? Do you talk about it in small group time? And then as a family, what does storytelling look like for you as a family? Yeah, we see all throughout human history that storytelling is a way that people connect. It's a way that people share culture and share hope share information. 
So we look at storytelling, and it's something that God clearly put in each of us, put in every person, every family, every community, and we can see how different communities, different families tell stories, and how they use storytelling to, to impact each other's lives. Now, in pop culture, we see so many different types of stories, and we know that not many of these stories are necessarily like Bible-focused or, or Christ-focused, but even in the way we tell stories and listen to stories, all across the spectrum, we can see some of that reflection and some of that thumbprint of God. Right? When we look at stories about heroes, stories of heroes are, are we're meant to, to we're meant to have heroes, really. We're meant to have people that we look at and say, uh, there's something about them that is good, and we can identify what is that good thing. I mean, what do you think? Like what what is it about a hero that's good? It's a good story. It's worth worth celebrating. Who are some of your favorite heroes? So tell us that in the comment section. Who are your who are your favorite heroes and maybe why? Love to know that. Because we celebrate stories. We celebrate heroes. It's something that each of us in every culture that's ever existed tells stories of heroes. Tells stories of someone that came and saved the day. We can look at people like uh, Black Panther, Gandalf, Superman. We can look at stories about uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi and, and, uh, and different Star Wars characters, even Luke Skywalker. We can see all of these different people and these like really big pop culture, like you don't see their names in the Bible, but when I look at their story as a hero, there's something familiar about that. There's something about sacrificing yourself for, for the friends that you love. There's something about good fighting evil there's something about standing up for what's right and telling the truth what is it where have i where have i heard this before where where did this idea possibly come from oh that's right uh that's that's really something that all comes back to who jesus is and jesus is lord over all he's lord over everything in culture whether culture realizes it or not so even in our storytelling today in 2021 we see stories being told that really mirror who Jesus is and what God has done for us, right? What Jesus has done for us on the cross. And we see stories that reflect these good qualities. And because we live in a broken world and you and I are not perfect, we are made in the image of God. And sometimes, yes, here is a great reflection. Sometimes we need to look at ourselves and say, I'm not telling a great story about who Jesus is in my life. If you were going to watch and listen to me and the story I'm telling in my life, you may not see a lot of Jesus. Or maybe when I look at some of the stories that I love to listen to and watch, this is where we start to get into that conversation of, man, should I watch this? Should I listen to this story? Should I read this story? Because it really is a story that is telling me the complete opposite of what Jesus is. It's a story about somebody who is in full open rebellion to the image of God. And there's really not a, right? Like every story has villains, but they're villains. Like we know that in, in Star Wars, we know who Darth Vader is. We know he's a bad guy. So there are some stories where Darth Vader is the main character. He's the, he's the person we're supposed to cheer for. And you read that story and I wonder to myself, is this a story like that's gonna be good for me as I try to figure out who I am and how my life is gonna reflect Jesus? Or is this a story that's kind of painting the wrong picture? Is this a story that's giving me the wrong impression of how I can tell my stories? So we wanna reflect and think about what story is your life telling? And again, how do you tell stories is important. That's kind of like our culture of, of how we communicate and how we tell stories. But what is your story? I mean, what is the story of your life if you were going to write it down, if you were going to turn it into a TV show or a movie, what would that look like? What would it sound like? Uh, we, again, all stories are either, like all culture, are either going to reflect the goodness and truth of God, or they're going to reflect the open rebellion and sin of humanity. It's going to be one or the other. And so we can look at something like Iron Man, and we can see where Iron Man is a story not about God, but I can see where the story of Iron Man, it, it has the reflections, it has the the character of a hero that reflects who Jesus is. Now, I'm not gonna name, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you guys do the hard, complicated work, but there are stories, there are things that we see and celebrate that do not in any way reflect the character of a hero like Jesus. And that's where we need to, to look ourselves in the mirror and we need to be honest and ask, do I, 
Do I want to fill my heart and my mind with this story? Because I'm made to tell stories, I'm made to hear stories, but not every story is good. Not every story reflects the character of a hero like Jesus. You know, we see in the Bible, and I'm going to share this passage with you all in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure and lovely and admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. And this is a reminder to look at stories and look at what we're listening to, what we're watching, what we're, we're soaking in. And is this lining up with the character of a hero like Jesus? Again, I might not see the word Jesus on the title of this movie, and we are not, I am not going to be here to say, you guys can't watch Iron Man, you can't watch the Avengers, you can't watch Star Wars, you can't watch Harry Potter, you can't watch Lord of the Rings, like, you, just these big classic, uh, you know, movies, right, the movie franchises. I think we can look at these things and see the character of a hero who reflects something about who God is and who Jesus is. Because quite honestly, most of these characters are directly inspired by someone in, in, in the, the, the light of Jesus. They're inspired by either Jesus or somebody who followed Jesus. Jesus is the main character in the story of everything. Jesus is the hero in the story of everything. So the stories we tell, the stories we live in our life, either points to Jesus as the hero and the character, or it doesn't. It either points to him as our savior, or it doesn't. So the story you and I we listen and we tell, right? The story that we're, we're taking in and sending back out, is it reflecting Jesus or is it not? Are the stories that we're listening to in pop culture, the stories that we read and watch, are, are they pointing in some way to the character of a hero who is like Jesus or not? And that's where we guys, we would start to wrestle this in the complicated nature of there's lots of different ways to tell stories. There's animation, there's live action, there's, there's TV, there's movies. There's plays, there's, there's all sorts of different things and lots of different cultures to explore storytelling. The content of these stories, is the content going to push me closer to understand and see and celebrate who Jesus is? Or is it pushing me to celebrate rebellion against the character of Jesus? So that's part of our conversation tonight. We encourage you to join us for small groups later on and we're gonna continue this series next week and we're excited for you to join us. So come back same time and we'll see you later. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, every hour I need you, you're my one defense, and my righteousness, oh God, how I need you.
Thank you guys for hanging out with us again tonight. We hope you enjoyed the message and the music and the fun. We want you to know that we're praying for you every day and we are excited every time we have an opportunity to share with you and to be together. We are live and in person here at the building on Wednesday nights and we're live with you uh, through our premiere on YouTube and Facebook as well on Wednesdays. We just want you to know that there are more and more opportunities coming up for Collide Student Ministry and for you to get together and to connect so we'd love to hear more from you on what you're looking forward to. And we are going to take a small break next Wednesday night from our regular um, Jesus and Culture series. So we're going to kind of pause in the middle and have an important conversation and time to reflect next week together. So you'll see more about that next week. I just want to give you a heads up. There's a lot of great stuff coming up. Make sure you're checking us out on our social media. We're on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and our website is serverrun.com slash students and you can find our newsletter in our Instagram bio it also gets emailed out every week check the uh, comments for our weekly DoorDash prize winner and congratulations to that person we hope to see you guys again soon invite a friend and join us next time until then good night